Hi team, this is Chris Abram from GoMath. Today we're going to work on number 27 on the General Curriculum 03 Math Practice Test. This is a great problem for any teacher that's taking the math and tells whether it's the General Curriculum, the 53, the 47, or the 09. And this is all part of the Harvard Square MTEL Math Workshop series. So if you haven't gone to an MTEL Math Workshop through GoMath, uh, I recommend that you give it a shot because it will really help you focus in on the core math for your exam. But now let's first take a look at the problem. Right away I'm seeing it involves um, graphing. And not just any old graphing, graphing on an x and y axis. Um, so I'm going to be thinking algebra. Now um, it says here 27. The function rx gives the remainder when a whole number x is divided by 10. Which of the following graphs represents rx? This throws people off. They're like, function rx? I want you to think of function rx, or r of x, however you want to say it, as another way of saying y. So guess what? And that's equal to your output. Now, there's a lot more we could do with this. But basically what I'm saying is that when you see rx, think of y, which is your output. Think about it in those terms, and I think it's going to make it a lot more sense. Now we go back. The function rx um, gives the, so my output here is going to be the remainder when a whole number x is divided by 10. So if I think about this in terms of it, uh, my function, I, I have an input and an output. I put in the whole number, let's say, Let's say I put in 10. It's divided by 10. What's the remainder? 10 divided by 10 is 1, and there's no remainder. So this actually has a remainder of 0. That's my output is going to be 0. OK, what happens if I plop in 20? 20 divided by 10, right? 20 divided by 10 is equal to 2, and it has a remainder of 0. So my, again, my remainder is 0. Alright, that, that's fine. So I should be looking for the graph where when I put in 10, the output is 0. When I put in 20, the output is 0. Great. Now, um, well, let's just say we, we backtrack a little bit. And I might uh, fix my graph, make a little neater. Let's now, let's, let's see, I, I have my input-output chart here, let's say. And I have uh, some cool colors I'm going to use. Yeah, let's leave this one. So when x is 10, my remainder is 0. What about when x is 11? What happens when you divide 11 by 10? 11 by 10 equals 1, and it's got a remainder of 1, right? So this would be 1. What if it was 12? Well, I do the same thing. 12 divided by 10, it would equal 1 and a remainder of 2. What if I did 20? We did that just before. That had a that goes in evenly, so it's zero. Now I'm going to look to see which one of these choices, which one of these choices has an input of 10 and an output of zero. So I'm at here. I look here. When x is 10, y is zero. This one has it right there. Same with this one here. What about this one? This one says when x is 10. The output is 10. Uh-uh, that's not right. And same with this one here. When x is 10, that means it's an open space, so we go up here. So right away, if I did the input-output chart, I could eliminate these answer choices. Because they're not on my graph. I could double-check. When x is 11, y should be 1. Well, let's see. It's hard to see, but I think it's fair to say that when x is almost 11, it goes up 1. When x is 12, it has a, a remainder of 2. So actually, a is your correct answer. Now, let's step back a little bit, and let's look at another clue in this question. It's talking about, uh, it's talking about a function, and this function is only using whole numbers. Well, what does that mean? That means when I think about the inputs, my x values, 
I'm only going to be using values that are whole numbers. What are whole numbers? Whole numbers are like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 10. These are numbers that can be divided by 1 with no remainder. I'm not including, these are, no, these are not whole numbers. I'm not including like 1.5 or 1.75. That's a 7 and a 5. I'm not including decimals or fractions or irrational numbers. So you know what that means? That means I'm going to be jumping. I'm going to, I'm going to have a graph that has points that, that move up kind of like steps, dots. I'm not going to include everything. And if you look at these graphs, A and B involve whole numbers. Because I'm jumping from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3. I'm not including all the spaces in between 2. Whereas with, um, with the graphs C and D, these include inputs, x values, that fill in the space between 1 and 2. So it's a straight, non-broken line. Nothing, all the inputs are in, are in, all of my possible inputs for the domain are there. It's not just, you know, whole numbers that includes fractions, des, you know, decimals, um, irrational numbers. They're all there, which fill in the whole spot. So that's another way of being, ver of very quickly being able to say, uh-uh, this involves all real numbers. I'm not going to use that. Or all, um real numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. And this one here, this is the one that these two graphs involve whole numbers, so it's got to be one of these. And then you have to do your, your chart, like we did before, and you got to say, if 10 goes in, what's the remainder? If 11 goes in, what's the remainder? And that will lead you to this one right here as the correct answer, A. Okay, team, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, once again, this is Chris Abram from GoMath. Check out one of the Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops. Keep on watching the videos. Go to the GoMath.com for tutoring. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you.